let's get going. Uh, so two parts, basically. I'll say a few introductory bits and pieces and then hand over to Joel to do the scary live demo, <laughs> which we, you know, fear and trepidation about live demos, but uh, it's going to work. It's going to be great. Um, uh, so a bit of background. Uh, once again, we're talking about Research Vocabularies Australia, aka RVA. Um, I think most on the call are familiar with that. Um, if not, please have a look, give it a go. Um, we've been building this now for, gosh, a long time, four years, something like that. And um, we realised that um, a certain amount of the functionality is um, a good first attempt, and we, we, we've been progressively uh, rebuilding some of the features. And over the last few months, we've been particularly focused on search. So uh, one of our, uh, the ARDC um, phrases that we, uh, terms that we put around is notion of fair, uh, and we encouraging our partners to, uh, to produce fair data, and the F uh, in findable, um, fair is all about discovery, being able to find things. So we realised and we acknowledged and we, based on feedback what we've been receiving, um, both the comments that have been emailed to us and through the RBA consultation that we had uh, earlier in the year that um, our users really do want an enhanced search capability. So we've spent a bit of time trying to make it a lot better. And I think to a certain extent, at least we've been successful, um, but as always, we do welcome your feedback and. Uh, please do get in touch and let us know what you think. So a couple of example uh, feedback comments that we've received uh, from the consultation. Uh, discovering a term with a single query would be nice. It took me 30 minutes to find a term or even if one existed. Um, and one of the more honest feedback, uh, pieces of feedback that we got, you get a list of sets as vocabularies and now you have to look into each one to actually find a potential term, tedious and useless. Um, <laughs> we. That's, that's really great feedback. That sort of gave us a real challenge and um, impetus to, to really do something good. So we hope we've, we hope we've been able to make a, a new search with capability that's, um, that's useful uh, and helps you to find uh, the concepts that you're after. So a certain amount of that is about finding concepts, terms within vocabularies, but we haven't just worked on that. That is a, that is a major new piece of functionality, but we've also been um, adding other little tweaks and, and features to the existing vocabulary search, uh, which is a search of the vocabulary metadata. And we'll see some of that as well. A um, couple of uh, slides to recap uh, from the previous uh, talk about RVA that we gave earlier in the year, I think in March. Uh, so we were talking about, for example, the subscription system and uh, just another a plug for that uh, on, the view, on the view page. Um, indeed, if you if you had subscribed to um, notifications about the GCMD vocabularies, you would have got a notification that we put out uh, version nine uh, when it it's basically the same day that it came out from NASA, uh, and so that's in there. Um, so another another plug for the subscribe function uh, that's there on every view page. Um, and now this is again another slide from the presentation earlier in the year that that. I, I put up because it shows you what search looked like back in those days. So this is the before screenshot. Um, it's, a, it's a search functionality on the vocabulary metadata and also to a certain extent on concept metadata. So we do get, you, would, you will get hits against uh, concept uh, labels. Uh, and you see also on the left hand side, uh, the facets, uh, subject publisher, etc. cetera. Um, anyway. We've completely, well, almost completely redone this page. Uh, and so here's the after. Uh, and uh, this, looking at this prompted me to think, oh, you know, let's go back to those sort of classic puzzles where you spot the difference. Uh, so I've sort of done that uh, and um, put some boxes around uh, the main differences that you'll see here. I'll just very quickly go through some of these and you'll see, see these again in the demo. Uh, I'll just go through them in, uh, as they're numbered. Uh, so we put in a link to some help. Uh, so we do have a dedicated search uh, help page about search. Um, and uh, that's, I think, very helpful. Uh, lots, lots of details about that because 
just realistically speaking, not everything that you see on this search page is, is, is crystal clear. There are a few things that, that um, you might need a, a bit of help understanding. It's a massive pain. Have you been to the Clayton campus? Yep. Hello, I've got a few people on, <laughs> not muted. Um, so that's point one. Point two, uh, number two and number three, these are some additional uh, fil uh, filtering options. You can change the sort order of your results. You didn't used to be able to do that at all, and now you can. You have some options, including alphabetical search. Um, and you can also uh, change the number of uh, results per page. On the left-hand side, we've got what apparently is in the industry is called a bread box. Uh, it's a list of all of the filters that you've, that you've, that you've got on your current search. Um, at point five, we now have for the, for the, uh, for the facets where there are a large, typically a large number of values, which, in this, uh, which is subject and publisher, we now have a little uh, text area where you can filter down uh, to, to limit the number of subjects and publishers that are displayed. Uh, number six, uh, some, well, let's call them quirky uh, facet, additional facet count indicators um, with checkboxes, uh, and we'll see how that works uh, in the demo. So this is, <laughs> you can either, it, well, I'd say give it a go <laughs> and see what you think. Um, it, it, this is a complement to, uh, to the facet counts on the right-hand side, um, which show you the number of uh, results in your, in your current search. Um, anyway, we'll see that in the demo. Number seven, uh, we just made highlighting of uh, the search results uh, just a little bit uh, more clear, I think. Um, the highlighting was just bold and now we've got also, we've made it, um, we put in the background color. So the, the highlighting stands out just a little bit more. And number eight, is a tiny little thing, but uh, it's a big deal. This is now showing the, you, that you have a, a, a tab interface on the search results. This is, a, and there's a little bit of a tease showing you there um, that you can now get results that are, that are concepts. Uh, and I won't show any, any more of that now, but you'll see that in the demo. Uh, so that's a, the concept search is a major, major addition. Having said that, uh, your feedback on any of this is, any or all of this is welcome, and as usual, please do get in, in, in contact with us. And now I hand over to Joel for the demo. Thanks, Richard. Hopefully you can see the uh, homepage for RBA now. Um, put in the chat if you can't. I think we are sharing this whole screen. Um, so I'm going to repeat a little bit of what Richard said, but I'll go into a little bit more detail and show how things work. Um, in terms of uh, the homepage, um, we can see underneath the search bar, we have a link to the help. Um, and we've also added a link to browse all concepts. So the browse all vocabularies was there previously, and now we've added one for concepts where you can click and it will take you directly to um, the concepts tab within the search. Um, in terms of searching, we've stuck with a single search box um, and this was uh, one of the aims that we wanted to have was to allow sort of a single entry point to the search so that new users um, and even existing users coming to the site didn't get confused between two different search boxes for two different search types. So we tried to leave sort of a, enable a single entry point which was quite easy to understand. So conducting a search from uh, the single search box will end you up on the search page which Richard has just shown. Um, and we now have a, a few new elements to the page. So as Richard indicated, we have uh, these tabs which sort of separates the two searches that are conducted um, when you enter a, a query term or query terms and hit search. Um, it actually fires two searches. Um, so they're separated by the tabs. So we've got a vocabulary tab, which is the default tab. And then we have a, a concepts and et cetera tab. Um, now this is a little bit of tongue-in-cheek humour from Richard. Um, we had a few long lengthy discussions around what to call it because um, it's not just concepts. We also include other uh, resources and uh, manual top concepts within those search results. Um, so there's things like uh, SCOS collections and concept schemes that will come up in that search as well. Um, in terms of the interface, um, I'll just go through some of the things that Richard's highlighted already. Um, 
one of the biggest challenges that we had um, was sort of the separation between the two searches. So we've got a single search box. The terms that you put in the search box are shared between the two different searches. So if I, for example, put in, let's say market, I get search results for vocabularies and also for concepts. Now they're two separate searches. Um, the interface, there's a few little things to note. Um, the query term is obviously shared between the two searches. The sort option is shared between the two searches and the show option is also shared between the two searches. Everything else is basically search independent. So all the filters that apply down the left hand side at the moment, because I'm on the vocabularies tab, are applicable only to the vocabularies search. And then if I flipped over to the concepts uh, tab, all the filters down the left hand side are applicable only to the concept search. Um, so it's, it's sort of a little bit of a balancing act between having that single entry point with a, a one search box and then having two searches that are sort of running together um, in parallel. Uh, the bread box, as Richard pointed out, I think um, we put out uh, the first sort of sprint that we did earlier this year um, and the bread box came with that. Um, so that allows you to see all the filters that you've <coughs> excuse me, applied to your search. Um, and again, there is a bit of a mix there in terms of the query term is shared, but any of the filters that you apply will be specific to the search vocabularies or concepts, etc. And they'll show in here. So for example, if I cleared market at the moment, it will clear for both tabs. Whereas if I've got, say, a subject selected on the vocabularies tab, it will not apply to the concepts tab in Redbox. Oh, sorry, other way around, I'm on the concepts tab. Um, so I'll put a subject in the concept search, it won't apply in the vocabulary search, I won't see it in the red box to clear, but clearing that query term will actually clear it for both searches. In terms of the filters, um, we had some issues in the, in the uh, I guess, the initial sort of uh, search page where we had subjects and publishers that were really, really long lists, um, filters. So you'd get to sort of, I think it was 15 or 20 items down the list and then there'd be a view more link and you'd expand it out and you might get, you know, 50 to 100. Um, so we've tried to clean that up by having a scrollable uh, filter section for each of the, the really long lists within the filters. Um, and we've also added a filter to the facets to filter your filters, um, which works simply by, by adding text in. So I can just put in uh, any text and it'll quickly filter that and I can clear those as well. Um, one thing to note with the filters, you may have applied several, so I can put in ands in here and I can put in address in here, for example. Anytime you make a selection or you update your search, so if I select addresses here, it will actually clear both those filter boxes and you'll sort of get back uh, your results and, and the applicable filters for those results. Uh, so that's the scrollable section. In terms of the counts that, that Richard indicated before, the counts that you see down the right hand side of the filters represent the results in your current search. So in our current search, we have one vocabulary with uh, the subject of address. Then when we actually select an item within a filter category, so if I select, uh, let's select an interesting one here, um, built environment within subject, You'll see once I select a single item within that category, I get additional counts that show up for the other filters that I haven't selected. So we get a combination of counts here. We get the counts um, of the items within your search down the right hand side. So we can see there's no AWRA subject within our current search, but there is one still in the index that we can add to our current search. So if I click that, I'll get both those subjects selected. Um, and I'll get the, any vocabularies that contain the AWRA subject within my search. Um, so it takes a little bit of getting used to, I guess, those counts, um, but I think they're pretty handy when we, when we go through um, how the, the filters are actually combined. Um, I might do that now, actually, so it might make a little bit more sense. I'll pop into the, the help guide because there's a little image in here which is um, probably easier to understand than me trying to explain it. Gonna scroll. I hope everyone can see that picture. So this is the way that the the filters that you apply uh, are added to your search. So any of the options that you select within a filter category are connected with an OR statement. 
any of the filters across categories are selected with an AND statement. So basically this means that within each category, anything that you're searching for has to have at least one of the options within that category for it to match the search. Um, and this obviously comes, comes into play when we start looking at those counts within the filters. Uh, further on down, um, I'll show it, I'll actually show it on the concept tab that might make a little bit more sense if I clear over to the concepts tab. One thing to note with the concept search um, is that we've implemented something that we're calling collapsing. And this basically groups results into a single search result where um, we've got either the same IRI within one vocabulary or the same IRI across vocabularies. Um, so you can, by default, um, we collapse based on the IRI within a single vocabulary. So I'll put in, I might just clear this and put in an example. Uh, where is it? That's the one I'm looking for. Let's switch over to concepts. So I've just done a uh, concept search. And basically the, the collapsing is currently applied to the same IRI within the same vocabulary. Um, so I'll just scroll down so I can see one. Uh, so if we're looking here at the base of Middle Jurassic, we can see at the bottom of the search result there is view other versions. Now, if I click that little box, we'll see that all the other versions where this concept is contained in is being collapsed into this single result. Um, and we've done this basically to prevent having the same uh, concept show multiple times within the search results. So we may have a vocab that has, say, 50 versions where the concept has existed throughout those 50 versions and you will basically see base of middle Jurassic 50 times within your search results which is not necessarily useful to an end user. So by default we're collapsing within the single vocabulary um, and across those versions and you can actually access each of the details for that concept so it may have changed over time that the label may have changed or there may have been descriptions added and you can go in and view the, the resource details um, at those certain points in time. And I will go into that in a little bit. Um, but just to finish off the, the collapsing mode, and there's more details obviously in the, the help, if I'm not explaining it clearly, um, you can switch the collapsing mode. So down the very bottom of the concept search tab, and it's only available on the concepts search, there is an option to change uh, from the default collapsing mode, which is within the same vocabulary, to don't collapse at all. So then you will see you know, 50 of those uh, Jurassic concepts across the search. Um, or you can just collapse results with the same IRI. So what that will do is I'll select that one. Um, and we can see, you know, I think this second result here. So the same IRI or the same concept has been used in several vocabularies. So by selecting the option of just uh, collapse on IRI, I'm collapsing not just within the versions of a vocabulary, but across uh, vocabularies as well. So that's down the bottom of the result, we can see the other versions of where this uh, result has come from, so the geolo geological timescale um, vocabulary. But we can also see there's another option to the right here, which is view other vocabularies. And we can see the other vocabularies that this concept is contained within and has been grouped into this search result. And again, you can go in and view uh, the details of that concept within that, that vocabulary as well. Now, to start with, we have defaulted to collapsing on IRI within, the vo within a single vocabulary, because we think that's probably the most common um, use case at the moment, where across you know, multiple versions, you have the same concept coming up. But we may find in the future, as concepts are mapped across different vocabularies and shared across vocabularies, that we may need to switch it um, to collapsing across vocabularies based on IRI. And we're happy to hear your feedback if you would prefer that method and, and everyone agrees, then we can easily change that option. Um, okay, so that's collapsing. Um, in terms of the search itself, so we've made some pretty significant tweaks, I think, uh, to the search. Um, I'll just reset this one. So Rich has done a really great job. I, I asked him, uh, to implement a, a Google style search where I could do exact phrase searches and Boolean searches and he, and he went away and thought long and hard about it and he found something very useful and implemented it and it, it now it works really well. So we can combine exact phrase uh, searches um, 
just by simply putting uh, our query terms within uh, double quotes, just like Google. Uh, so I can hit market, and then you know, if we wanted to find the regulation, I can narrow it down that way with the exact phrase search. Uh, one thing to note is any of your query terms, they're case insensitive. So uh, as the search is executed, we lower case or the query terms, so you don't have to worry about case. Um, nice feature, we can obviously, if I go back one, rerun that. I can combine exact phrases uh, with you know, your standard query terms and also with Boolean. Um, so I can put a minus sign in and I can say, now I don't actually want regulation. Um, regulation, yes, thank you. And that will basically exclude anything with regulation in it, but exactly match market. So this is, I think, a really great uh, improvement to the search. Um, there's obviously in the in the using help guide there's some more um, information about sort of the advanced search options that you can use within the within the search box. Um, in terms of other improvements to the search that uh, Richard sort of highlighted, well, highlighting, uh, so I'll just put that in again. Um, we had some comments back um, within, uh, I think probably within the review process and, and I think even before that, um, that the highlighting didn't always show uh, for the search results. So you weren't actually sure why the result was coming back. So we've addressed that issue and now you should always see highlighting, at least one highlighting um, snippet within your search results. So it's really clear on why that item's coming back. Uh, the other changes that we made to the search, um, they're not really visible, but behind the scenes, we've uh, made some adjustments to the search ranking um, to try and make the results a little bit more accurate in terms of what you're searching for. Um, I don't have a real good example for that. Some other uh, good features that have gone in uh, are the ability to um, navigate back through your search history. Um, so previous, in the previous uh, version of the, the search page, if you hit back, it would sort of sit there and do nothing. Um, you would hit a few times and you'd end up somewhere that you wouldn't want to be. Um, so now the navigation button's on the browser, so if I click back, I can actually navigate forward and backwards through my search history, which is really nice. Um, if you're sort of narrowing down, you end up with zero results, you can go back one and then um, obviously change the search parameters that you're using for your search. Uh, the other feature just to, to mention quickly um, is scroll history. So uh, this works if you navigate away from a search results page to a page that isn't a search. Um, we try our best to restore your scroll position within the search results. So if I scroll down the bottom of the page and I flick off to the platform category vocabulary, when I click back on the browser, I'll actually be navigated back to that point within the search results. And that's a really handy thing if you're sort of navigating through the results and reviewing the results uh, and flicking back and forth uh, between say the vocabulary view and the search results will try and uh, leave you back where you, where you started uh, in the search results. Um, okay, onto the concepts tab. Um, I will just go into a little bit more detail at the bottom uh, for each of the, the concepts or resources, I should say. It's not just concepts. Um, for each of your concept results, uh, we have um, generated, well, not generated, we've picked uh, a display label. Um, this is obviously, um, we've got some business rules depending on the type of resource that it is. So we try and get so an English SCOS pref label for the um, concepts. And then we work our way through sort of DC titles and things until we can get a display label for the search. Uh, the, the link um, for the concept result actually takes you to the view page. Um, and there was obviously a balancing act there between some vocabularies that are published and we could take you to say the SysFoc link data API sort of view of things and then other vocabularies uh, which aren't published and all we have is the view page. Um, so for safety um, and consistency, we've just had a link which goes directly to the view page for the vocabulary. Now that's obviously not going to be super useful for a lot of people because if I did click on, you know, it's less than 20%, it's just going to take me to the view page and I don't have any information about the concept um, to evaluate that concept unless I go down to the browse tree if it's there and try and find the concept within there. 
So what we've done is we've put in a button down the bottom which allows you to view the resource details for that result. And I can click on that and it'll give me a pop out and give me more information about that concept or resource. Um, if it's available in SysFoc, uh, there'll also be a link within this pop out to go and view that uh, resource within the Link Data API. So I'll scroll down and see if we've got one in here. Just one in there. So here's an example. Um, there's also a link, obviously, here um, to directly straight to the Link Data API. But again, once I'm in that view, uh, the details to do with the concept or resource, there's a link up the top where I can go and find that um, within the structure of the vocabulary. Um, I think that's most of what I've got. Um, okay, one last thing is the quirkiness with the counts. Um, so with the implementation of collapsing, so the grouping within a single search result, there is some interesting behaviour that happens with the filter counts. Now to demonstrate this, um, I'll clear this search and scroll down to the bottom. Sorry, jumping around a bit. I've cleared and gone back to the default tab, which is okay. So I'm on the concept tab now, and I'm down the bottom in the filters where we can see version status. And there's a little eye here, which basically gives you a little bit of information about the filter counts and how they might be a little bit off in terms of um, the user expected um, behavior. So at the moment, we have the default collapsing, which uh, collapses all the results within a single vocabulary with the same IRI. And what happens is that we take preference to the, the concept within the current search, which means all the superseded versions are grouped into a single result for that uh, concept. So at the moment, we can see that we've got you know, 41,000 uh, concepts within our search, uh, which have a status of current. And we have 4,026 superseded um, within the search. Now, if I select current, for example, or I can select superseded, It'll basically tell me that there are 34,000 uh, superseded concepts within my search, and there are 41,800 odd uh, current um, concepts within the index that aren't currently in my search. Now, if we add those two numbers together, we should get a nice even result of what was it? 70 odd thousand. But what we actually get is 45,000 results, and that's because collapsing is at play. So when we add the, con the current concepts into the search, yes, there are currently 41,000 within the index that aren't in our search, and there are 34,000 within our search have superseded, but when we combine the two and the collapsing takes effect, the numbers actually are reduced um, within the, the search results. So it's a little bit confusing, and I probably didn't explain that the best, um, because it is confusing. Um, but there is obviously some information in the help again, uh, with a little diagram that kind of explains how the collapsing of results can affect um, the search result counts. It's down the bottom here somewhere. Yeah, so there's a little bit of uh, descriptive information there that you can go and refer to, uh, which might explain it a little bit better than I just did. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Have I missed anything that I should cover, Richard? Uh, just acknowledge uh, our, our debt to basically everybody who's done a faceted search before uh, in, in terms of the design. We've, we've tried to make it as, as much as possible what you expect from having used other, um, uh, other websites. Um, and in particular, the, the the pop-up for the resource details we have ruthlessly stolen from BioPortal. Uh, so um, if you if you use BioPortal you, and and use the pop-ups that they have, you'll 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 see aha, that's where we got that from. So um, not all of this is freshly invented, um, but we've we've tried to um, follow um, the good ideas that other people have had in terms of implementing a search interface. And I think. Yes, please.